What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today is our third video in the design theory video series and we're going to be talking about values. I'm not talking about your beliefs and how you feel about things in the world, I'm talking about changes in color and light and gradation and how it applies to your artwork. So we'll be taking a look at some examples of value and how you can use it in your own artwork to help you design better. And first, before we get into it, I just wanted to say thank you guys. We have just surpassed our uh, 200 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you everybody who has uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel or liked our Facebook page. Um, I really appreciate your support. It means a lot to us. So uh, stay tuned because we've got a lot of great things in store for you guys, including this video series, which uh, we're about to get underway. So you'll see here on the first page, what I want to show you guys is the basics of values. Now, values are basically an indication of changes in color from light to dark or dark to light. So on this first page, you'll see that we have um, going by increments of 10 from right to left, you know, basically changes from white to black. Now, in these steps, you'll see it's basically grayscale going from a very light shade all the way to pure black at 100%. Now, the interesting thing is that all of these grayscale values um, and, and colors are very closely related. So if you look at the darkest oranges and the darkest cool blues, um, they are closely equated to 100% black. Oftentimes in paintings and things like that, you'll see artists actually use very dark shades of red or brown or even blue um, as, instead of pure black. Artists will actually use just very deep shades of a certain color or a deep value of that color, I should say. But as you go to the right here and you see it get lighter and lighter, you have kind of a gray equivalent. So I would say that this light orange or light blue is actually the closest to this 10% uh, gray or black here. Whereas, you know, somewhere in the middle might actually be closer to around 50%. So if you're having a little trouble understanding that, I'm gonna explain it a little bit later on in the demo portion of the video. But moving on, on the bottom here, you'll see um, the value, basically instead of going, you know, a smooth transition like we have here, showing a light source with a, a mid-tone here, or a local value, and then a shadow. And what I mean by local value is if we didn't have a light source here on the upper right, or a shadow on the bottom left, you'd be left with basically the mid-tone or whatever the original color is. And you can see in these examples here, here's a smooth transition in value, and then here's a sharp transition in value where you get this hard line both in the circle and in the square. And the interesting thing to note here is that value or changes in value can actually indicate whether it's a smooth surface or a hard surface. And you can really tell the difference in looking at these shapes. So in this example, um, instead of talking about local value, we're going to be talking about relative value. And what I mean by that is if you look at this first row of squares on the top, um, you'll basically see, you know, a white, a mid-tone gray, and a dark gray on a solid black. But then in the second row, you'll see these same colors on a mid-tone gray instead of a black. Then on the bottom, you'll see these same colors on a very light gray. So what's interesting to notice here is that the way that the white appears on black versus the way it appears on the light gray it kind of tricks your eye and it actually makes you think that it could be a different color and that's what I mean by relative uh, value, is basically how a value appears when it's placed next to another color. So again, take a look at the middle column, where we have that um, middle gray on black, medium gray, and a light gray. Now on the bottom row, you can't even see the square right where my arrow is. You know, it's, it's like if you were to take a medium blue and place it next to red, it's going to look different than if you were to put it next to, say, green or something like that. All right, and underneath you can see I've kind of uh, constructed this, what looks like a city or a skyline, just using values. And when you place them next to each other like this, it actually starts to create depth and perspective, or what you would refer to as atmospheric perspective. That is, um, the further away you get, the less saturated and lighter the colors become. 
So value can be used not only to create contrast, but it can also be used to create depth or the illusion of depth in an image. So moving along, um, this actually are these are actually a couple of examples of value, but combining value with some of our previous elements of design, um, including shapes and lines. And you'll see here how effective value can really be um, to make to give these things depth and dimension. And it's interesting to note that when you actually start to combine um, some of these different elements, how useful it can be. But just being able to identify them is a big part of the process in learning how to use them. All right, so now we're actually going to take a look at values in traditional illustration. And in all of these examples, you'll see how value, again, can be used to create depth and helps to create form. So, you know, it's just kind of like when we were looking at the sphere in the beginning or the, the square, you'll see that you have a light source in all of these images, and then you have darker areas, right? And this, this creates contrast, but it also creates a certain level of realism, which you really need to understand and try to practice in order to master it, and especially if you want to, you know, do a job half as good as, as some of these artists have, because this is, you know, some really impressive stuff, but that is why I wanted to show you guys these examples, because these are all, you know, masters at understanding and using value. All right, and here, you'll see I'm just taking it one step further. These are values now in both painting and in traditional and digital form. Now, um, in these examples, there are a couple of um, really cool paintings from Rembrandt, um, as well as uh, a couple of Baroque paintings and some, some digital paintings here. And in all of these examples, again, you will see, you know, value is definitely at play. Now, what's interesting is when you look at the image in the top right, it's a very uh, simplified use of, of value and contrast. And you're seeing shapes here as well. But, you know, those dark values are covering most of the figure. And then you're getting some medium and highlight uh, areas as well that are really creating some, some cool shapes as well as a certain level of realism. And you'll also see that in the middle image, the black and white image of the girl as well. So in order to uh, become a master in, in the arts, whether you're a traditional artist, digital artist, you really want to start to, to try and get a better hold on these things by identifying it and learning how to control it. Now in this part, I just wanted to explain to you um, something that I had touched on a little bit earlier, and that is talking about the uh, color equivalence um, in terms of value. So what I want to do is actually show you guys what you know what kind of values we're, we're working with here so I'm just gonna sample a few of these colors I'll, I'll start with some of the darker colors here in the image and kind of work my way towards a lighter and lighter color right and this is just gonna help me see what colors are being used here in the painting Right, maybe sample a little bit of the, the red from her lips, some of the highlights, some of the shadow areas. Okay. And some of these lighter colors as well. Alright, and then we also have these, you know, brownish gold colors. It's kind of similar to that, so you know, and this shirt is actually a great example of um, something else I was talking about earlier in local color. Now if you look at this shirt it's it can be a little hard to tell whether it's you know orange or yellow it looks like it might be orange but when you place a greenish or a yellow light on it it starts to inherit some of that color as well and the local color is actually you know whatever color it is without any shadows or highlights or anything like that applied to it but the way our eye perceives it is, you know, that it looks like this kind of orangey yellow color. All right, so here's kind of a basic uh, color palette that I've sampled from the images, okay? But what I'm going to do now is make a copy of all of these colors that I've just sampled. All right, and I'm going to take those colors and I'm just going to convert them into black and white. There. Now take a look at this for a second because what's interesting to note is that if you look at say the greens compared to the yellows, right? I'm just gonna 
mask these. All right, and I'm gonna hide the browns and the reds for a second so that we can just focus on these two. Uh, oops, sorry guys. So we can focus on just these two groups of colors. Okay, now if you look at the, the darkest, um, excuse me, if you look at the darkest areas of the browns compared to the darkest areas of the greens, they're actually pretty similar, right? I'm talking about these bottom two colors and these top two colors. But when you look at these colors in the middle here, you know, you, see, you start to see some differences in the, the shades of gray, right? This actually covers a wider range or a wider uh, spectrum of value than this. You know, these grays in the middle are, are actually pretty close. You know, so if you, if you were to color something in this yellowish color, you would want to initially paint it in this gray and then maybe wash over it. And one of the things that I see a lot of people get tripped up on, especially in painting, is that they try to jump in right away and just start painting with color. And while there are plenty of people who can do that, I think that it's actually a lot easier if you start off um, a painting in black and white. In this example, I'm actually painting um, from an image that I grabbed off of a stock photo site because I just like to practice sometimes, kind of, um, you know, trying to paint by eye and, uh, you know, freehand it a little bit. I, I'm not big on just kind of tracing over images, so I like to... Uh, just try and train my eye a little bit to see the values, to see the spatial relationships, and things like that. And it can be really helpful, just especially, um, like I was saying before, painting in black and white to try and get a better understanding of value. So that about does it for this lesson, guys, but I hope that you've gained a better understanding of value and how it can be of value in your work to help you become a better designer. So thanks for watching, guys, and once again, thank you so much. Uh, for your support and if you did enjoy this video please uh, give us a thumbs up comment and subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to sign up for that email list and get your free copy of the essential photoshop tutorials ebook